Your discretion is advised. Hey! Welcome back to another unboxing. And this one is actually really special to me because it is over Mansions of Madness, one of my favorite games of all time. Actually, I don't think it, I don't even think it was on my top ten. But, well, it could probably be up there if the setup time wasn't so long. But they actually seem to shock everyone, at least they shocked me, with coming out with a second edition, and my god, this box is heavy and big. I think it may be the same size as the first edition, but I don't remember because I have it in that thing, because there's so much shit with that one. So, let's go ahead and get right in it. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is the wonderful art that's that just, you know, peeks right out at you. One thing that I expect from Fantasy Flight is good, well-produced art. And hopefully, with this edition, they have some new art, not just basically remakes and, or reuses of what's in the first edition, because that would be kind of lazy. But it seems like they didn't do that with the, first, with the cover anyway, so shit. Okay. The one thing that is 100% different with this is that... This you have to play this game with an app, and I'm gonna try and keep this as centered as possible. But whew, okay, okay, not as wait, is it dramatic? Oh, 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 slowly, slowly but surely. But let's go ahead. Ah! Uh, oh, stop! Fully cooperative. That's actually one of the great things about this game is that this is 100% cooperative. You no longer need. Uh, a keeper. This isn't one versus many anymore. This is now everyone is working together and it requires the free digital companion app. How nice that everything is free. Well, let's go ahead and uh, okay, so basically the first thing you're going to see is it, it's basically uh, an, an introduction saying you can't play this game without it and it goes a little bit through the in-game interface and the monster menu um, interface for the app, so that's actually quite useful. I will most likely never read that. And of course, as with any Fantasy Flight, you get their catalog of games. Let's just see how many I own. Yep, I own most of these because I have no life. Okay, so Fantasy Flight has continued to do their split rule book with a learn to play and a rules reference, which I've only met one person who doesn't like this. Um, and that's because he is insane. Uh, I I love this. I absolutely think it's great that you only read a almost 20 page rule book with lots of pictures, lots of examples. And then if you have any more questions, you go and look it up in the rules reference. Brilliant, brilliant. And if they ever go back to their other, other ways, I will disown them and burn their stop, shop down. Next, you're getting a shit ton of tiles that look to be... Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to see is uh, not not quite a lot of stuff. I mean, there is not a lot of different stuff here. I mean, you have your stacks of... And with a box this big, you're probably assuming that, you know, there would be a lot, a lot of stuff. But it turns out that it's actually mainly just, well... We'll get to the other things in a minute, but with with the tokens and, and the cardboard that's coming with it, not not a whole lot here. Um, you do have your standard, you have your clue tokens that I mean are almost expected to actually be in in a uh, Cthulhu style game. But actually, if if I recall correctly, those were not included in the original. So obviously, something to be done with those, maybe collecting them like you do in Eldritch or Arkham. Uh, next is the huge variety of, of monsters, actually there isn't. And from what I've read that this game does actually, uh, it is compatible with the first edition, so maybe that's why. Maybe not a whole lot coming here because you can still use the stuff from the first edition, which better be the case because I have a lot of stuff and it's a lot of money. Anyway, if, and whenever you look at the creatures, if the, the creatures from the first one, they had a unique ability based on, um, what you rolled and what the what the combat cards were, which I love the combat cards. Uh, don't know if they're in this one. We'll get to that. But on the back of the the um, 
Yeah, let me see if you can get that. On the back, you will actually just see a small flavor text. Nothing really, you know, unique or anything about that. There are some icons on here. I'm seeing an eye. Okay, never mind. They all have an eye icon. Never mind. But as with the other ones, you are going to see the same uh, horror rating and, and uh, um, yep. And now, of course, you are going to have your, 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 bog standard stuff that's going to, you know, bring the board to life. And you, so you have your trapdoors, you have your bookcases, a uh, lot and lots of fire tokens. Lots of fire tokens, and on the back they're double-sided as well with an extinguished uh, lantern. So you got a lot of those going around, so I'm assuming fire is going to be important. Set the mansion ablaze. Uh, next are a bunch of these tokens, not qu quite sure what they are, they seem to be question marks? on them question marks with an exclamation point on the back so that could be you know key moments and now once again once again um let me let me withdraw my statement of how there's not a lot here because this game uses an app so maybe there isn't supposed to be a lot here maybe just enough to keep it interesting but a lot of you know the events and random stuff that you know the other game came with which kind of made the whole thing take an hour to set up they reduced in the in the app which i hope is the case next as with the question marks, you get a whole bunch of these lantern icons, so, or lantern tokens, same thing. And on the back seems to be this, um, uh, surprised eye looking symbol. I'm, I don't know what that means. Maybe, uh, if you walk into a room and this eye token is there, you see, like, your parents having sex. Maybe, maybe you see that, and that is enough to drive anyone mad. Of course, then you basically have, uh, the clue tokens. These remind me of Clue because they are color coordinated. And they were Colonel Mustard, uh, Miss Peacock, Professor Plum, uh, that actually wasn't a guy, um, Rusty, if you played the Clue FX one, Miss Scarlet, of course, uh, um, Mr. Green, and uh, who was Miss White. So I'm pretty sure that you, you're, this is, this always reminded me of basically Clue Cthulhu, and now they're actually confirming it. Of course, then you're going to have what seems to be either these are allies, the ally tokens. I don't know if you guys can see that, but ally tokens. Um, and of, and then on the back, they have the names of the person. So this one right here, that would be uh, Bobby Foster. And I'm assuming that those are companions. And as with the first one, you have your, these are uh, the door icons, I think. I think these are the door icons. Well, I actually don't know anymore. Nope, yeah, these are these are the doors, so... Doors, fra picture frames, bookshelves, and you have bookshelves on here, the stuff that you use to, you know, bar, bar doors and, and help uh, yourself from not dying. And getting to the cream of the crop, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, you are going to get to this actually really bright, colorful looking, really well done, the tiles, what's going to be the board. So let's go ahead and get to that. So you're going to be looking at these and they are all wonderful, wonderfully double-sided and pretty much have the same layout, same style as the original. You have your white uh, lines to, sep to separate spaces of where you're going to and instead of the foyer, it has a lobby. Now I, there was one thing I did notice. The, they all, all the tiles seem to have a, like an eldritch sign, or not eldritch, elder sign, uh, an eldritch horror sign, like the tentacle, uh, by the names, and I don't quite know what that means, maybe it's to distinguish what's in this one versus first edition, but I'm really hoping you all can see that. Um, I, I think it's well done, I'm glad that they actually did change up the art more than just basically having you use the the um, same tiles. And then of course there's oh a park pond. Well that water looks like it is actually the the where people take shits and black shits at that. Um, and then you have your smaller ones, basically your your hallways and the smaller room. So there's a study uh, hall stairs that'll lead down into your uh, you know where you and down into hell. And um, I don't want to show you all of it because some of you may want to be... Uh, well, I guess if you're in an unboxing, I guess you don't really care about getting things spoiled for you. But I'll still show you a few. They, they have a few aesthetics, ruffled papers that fell on the floor. Um, 
if you're getting a glare, then there's that. Yeah, sorry about the glare. I'm still trying to figure out how to, how to figure that out. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. And then, so alleys, and then, uh, well, actually, alleys. So that may lead to maybe bigger, not just confined to the mansion, but maybe a town. That would be cool, like a town nearby the mansion. Um, so you have a dock, and more alleys, more docks, alleys. Okay. Oh, hey, a rental shack. There's something different. Um, but I am curious as to how this is going. Oh, oh, that's actually really cool. A houseboat. There we go. So, I, once again, I'm actually still excited on how this is going to work uh, with the app and, and the tile setting it up. If there it could be a lot of scenarios that will vary based on which app you choose. And, because... Here's the thing, in the first one, the keeper is the one that chose everything. The keeper is the one that made the clues, and like, the, you can play a scenario multiple times with, you know, the keeper choosing different uh, answers to the question, so I wonder if that's going to be the case here. Um, but, without further ado, we are going to go on to the miniatures. Okay, let's jump right in. Now, first of all, this is actually a very small bag compared to what you would expect. Now, if you don't know, let me go ahead and tell you how much this bad boy costs. Now, from what I understand, Asmodee just did a huge uh, acquisition of a smaller company. Asmodee is like the biggest board game producer. Then comes, uh, I think it was F2Z or something like that. Uh, and they just bought them, which means that Asmodee now owns... Uh, Z-Man Games, uh, Fantasy Flight, so Days of Wonder, a whole bunch of them, which was, of course, going to raise prices. And uh, with the original game, I believe it was $79.99. Still quite a big game, but you got a lot of stuff with it. This one was nearly $90, and from what I'm seeing for it, if you're a huge fan of Mansions of Madness, definitely get it. If you're not, you, I'll, uh, I, I don't know, but... Let's go ahead and get into the minute. Okay, well, first of all, Cthulhu was eating this fucking guy as soon as he came out. Um, alright, alright, so this is real cool. I am actually digging this. You got an actual Cthulhu model that just... Well, it's not, like, outstanding, and the plastic actually seems to be kind of that, that soft plastic that's going to bend. Um, now, there is, of course, a way to fix that. Just get some warm water, dip it in and for a little bit, and then pull it out, and you can remold it. Um, but, of course, the models are going to be the, the same as they were in the, uh, in the, in the first edition. You're, you have the bases to where the monster, monster tokens can just slide right in, and I always thought that was, that was a brilliant idea, actually. Now... Sometimes it's actually a pain in the ass to get them to slide up in there, but there you go. And you have the title, and you just put the monster in it. Now let's actually find the cultist and see how well it fits in there. So we got our cultist. Got our little cultist there. Mmm, sexy. And, because a lot, the, that was another problem with the other one, is that sometimes they wouldn't fit. So this one, for example, actually fits really well, so that, that's really nice. I always thought this was, this was a cool thing, because you were able to put the damage tokens in there, and... Uh, everything else that was hidden, or was supposed to be hidden from the people, was hidden really well. So, that is actually, that one is a good fit. And you know what I'm thinking? I actually don't think these are Cthulhu's. They are not Cthulhu's, they are the Star Spawn. So, let me get a Star Spawn token, and see if, okay. Oops, as I throw all the shit around. Okay, so Star Spawn token, right, right there. Right, like that. Right, like that. And then... Well, it looks like, okay, his wings maybe aren't supposed to be flared out as much as they are. Um, which makes a little bit more sense. Now, even the detail on the miniatures, not not that great, but I see what they did. So, if we were going to, I'm assuming since this is a big creature, you're going to need the bigger base. And there we go. That's, that's how it's actually supposed to be done. Now, the bigger ones, the bigger models, now of course there, there are only the two here, were the biggest pain in the ass. The bases did not fit them, and, oh well, that's, that's cool. And they fell off, and you couldn't read shit, but we'll see how it is with this one. So the star spawn just slides right in there, and it seems like they actually did a better job at fitting the monster information into the base, because last time you had to like kind of have 
keep it half ass sticking out or you know not even have it in there at all. So let's see. It looks like that the star spawn would go in like like that. And they they did a good job with the bases. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, they did a wonderful job with the bases for these. I am actually very, very happy with how these turned out. Um, and the, the miniatures aren't as detailed as I'd like. They're, it's there, but they, I feel like they could have done a lot better. And of course, if you were into painting miniatures, which I would like to be, unfortunately I'm not, then maybe you can make it look way better. But the wings are kind of like, they're just flat and they look kind of half-assed. Um, and I, I, I just think the miniatures could have been done a little bit better. And then let's let's see. Let me let me do one more. Let me do a weird one. Yeah, one of these. I think these are the. Um, these are okay. So these are a new monster that they didn't have in the original, the hunting horror. So let me just show you, kind of. That's what it looks like. That's what the color's supposed to look like, and that's what it's originally supposed to look like, like that. Let's go ahead and fit it into the base, and then, uh, and then we'll fuck ourselves because. There we go. Obviously, once you put these in, just never take them out. There's there's literally no reason why you would ever, ever do that. And then, well, hold on. Actually, looks like this is supposed to have two. Well, that's for three. That's for, that's for, okay. Well, hold on. Ah! Okay, see? Remember what I said about never taking them out? There we go. Okay, so this, so you can tell there are these little notches at the bottom that probably mean that, that it goes in the space with two. There we go. That was a little bit easier. I could be completely wrong, but it turns out I am not. Although I don't know why this one would actually need two, but I am not complaining. Um, well, actually, no, I kind of am a little bit, because this looks too big, and it kind of makes the monster not look as impressive as it really should be. This is fine. This is fine. This is a bit overkill. Now, of course, you can just replace it with that. And then there's a whole bunch of other, well, not really a whole bunch of others, but enough there that since you can, um, well, I feel like the, the smaller ones actually have a lot more detail than the bigger one did. They do. The small, so for example, here is a deep one. Not a deep one, a, uh, yeah, no, it, yeah, it was. It was a deep, a deep one hybrid. Basically, the mix between the, the ones from um, Innsmouth, uh, the sea, and uh, just the regular people. So this is the detail on the miniature. You can kind of see, he actually looks like he has wool and knitted in his sweater along with his axe and his little hat. So he looks, I think, really well, uh, well done versus the star spawn. So let's go ahead and slide this one in here. And the reason why I'm doing this, actually, for a lot of them is because, yes, you can get the one that's like, oh, that one fits really well, and then the other ones that don't. I'm trying to let you guys get a majority to where we can all be 100% sure. And, yes, it, this one fits fits really well in, in them as well. Oh, well, that one kind of came out. But there we go. So, well done on the bases, and the art, of course, is still really really good on, on the text cards, but you never see them because you have the miniatures. Now, that, that was still a cool thing I always liked versus Arkham and Eldritch. Now, technically, Arkham, you can buy the miniatures and have them move about, but they're fucking expensive. Here, they came with it to where it, it kind of gives a little bit more life to, to the board instead of just having these things, the, the, the tiles hop around. Oh, that's scary. You have this lumbering thing <laughs> hopping around, so you're like, oh, fuck. I can't fucking do it anymore. Here's another thing. Here's another thing uh, that was that always bothered me about Fantasy Flight that other game gaming uh, board game companies do. With how much you get in a Fantasy Flight game, you think they would offer some sort of fucking bagging system. Like one of my favorite things is whenever I open a box and a company sends personal bags for all the other tokens, and you get you still get quite a few tokens that you know you can just throw them in their giant box of emptiness. Um, that this box is not this, this box does not need to be this big. It does not. Um, but they like to make it seem like you're getting more than what it's worth, and the least they can do is offer some bags. But say, Lovey, 
Oh, yeah. I don't even know what that means. I just hear Rado say it a lot. Okay. Dear God. Oh. <sighs> okay, so. That makes them. I don't know why. Why that's the case. So here are the people. Excuse me. Okay. Here are the people that are going to be the adventurers for throughout the game. Um, not, in my opinion, that well done. And I could be biased because I've been playing uh, Arcadia Quest, and so the miniatures for that are really fucking detailed, and I never feel like I have to paint them to make them look good. This kind of looks like it was done with cheaper plastic. Um, this guy's a cross, so thank God. And here's the annoying thing. I hate do-it-yourself kits. I hate whenever gaming companies make you put the put the pieces together. And this this game didn't do that, per se, but for some reason, this one guy right here doesn't have his arm on. I'm, I need to put his arm on for whatever reason, and hopefully, I swear it just, I hope it just clicks in. Okay, it does. But it also pops out like it's real fucking easy. First of all, that's a choking hazard. I can choke on this. Second, why? No one else is like that. You, you have eight people you can play as at the very beginning. Why does this one guy not have his arm on? I'm gonna have to super glue this, and I don't want to do, you know, let's, I'm gonna fucking super glue it right now. Okay, so I got my, my super glue that I didn't think I'd ever have to use again. Um, let's hope that it actually isn't all hardened inside the damn thing. And why not? Since I don't actually have... Aha! Lesson number one, kids. Whenever you are get opening your board game, never throw away the shrink wrap. Because sometimes you'll get miniatures that are retarded and make you have to super glue him. Now this guy's probably gonna look like shit because I am not crafty in any way and the glue is probably, hold on let me see if it's even gonna come out. So yes, so okay so so the glue is all fucking hard because I don't ever use super glue and now that's just annoying. Well I guess this guy is going to keep having his arm pop off, and it could be an aesthetic. Maybe he's supposed to. Maybe throughout the game, if you get your arm broken, you take off his arm. But as of right now, he's going to sit there, and I hope to God I don't lose his fucking arm. At least they came in their own bag. Instead of the big ripped bag that I'm going to now have to find a separate bag for, or just mix this into with my other box. Because... The next thing that we're going to look at is the conversion kit. Now, I didn't even know about this. I just saw it. Actually, well, I, I, I knew a little bit about it. Okay, so the conversion kit. One comes out with this folded out piece of the... Um, I don't know what this is. The contents of this conversion kit are designed to integrate the investigators, monster figures, and map tiles from first edition products into the second edition. Brilliant! Oh, and a giant advertisement for Eldritch Horror. So, if you already haven't spent enough money, then get then get Eldritch Horror because it is a good game. And of course, it seems like this is actually going to tell you what you can do with the people. Um, now let's get started. So, what you're getting in the conversion kit are the conversions for the people. So you got Ash Cam Pate, Glory. Gloria Goldberg, I, that was not Jewish, Harvey Walters, Jenny Barnes, Joe Diamond. Yeah, I'm not going to do a voice for all of them because I'm terrible at voices, but it actually looks like you are getting, if I'm not mistaken, all of them, if not almost all of them, uh, of, of the investigators. That is actually really nice with their own, of course, backstory, which is going to be great. And they have... Um, you know, modifiers for their abilities that they can do, and it seems like uh, luck is actually no longer a thing. 
in, in this one, where basically you had those investigator tokens you spent, um, not, I think they're investigator tokens, the little magnifying glasses you spent to help your, uh, you do better on uh, puzzles. Now, ooh, okay, I don't know, I haven't looked in the rest of the box yet, but there could be a huge difference. And you have, here, okay, so here are more of the monsters. Um, so these are monsters that basically you can take from the first game and convert them into the second one. So that is actually very nice. I'm not going to punch these out, but you do have, uh, yep, the, okay, so these earlier, these, these tokens, these tokens right here, with the names on the back that I showed you earlier, those were actually allies or people that you had to find because I do specifically remember Zebulon Watley. This guy. That guy. I don't know if you can see that. Dear God, I hope so. I will punch those out, though. You know what? You know what? I'm feeling frisky. I'm feeling it. I'm just going to go ahead and punch all of these out. And because... God, I'm actually super happy that I have all the other ones and, like, all the other stuff organized because so far I don't know how I'm going to organize all this yet. I may actually just make the huge com the u the uh, conversion, just put them all into my really useful box, uh, kind of figure out what will transfer over and what won't because then I'll just use a different box. That, that sounds like a grand idea. And, of course, I'm not going to do an unboxing for the first one because that's irrelevant. But you have actually, now there's a lot more monsters that we can mix together. I'll keep those a little bit more separate for the time being. Now, let us go on to the new investigators that they brought from the world of Cthulhu. Okay, actually these seem to be brand new people. So you got Agatha Crane, the uh, parapsychologist, all right. Karen Sinclair, the butler, ooh. Father Mateo, the priest, mmm. Min T. Pan, the secretary. These could all be, okay, you got uh, what looks to be Littlefinger from Game of Thrones. You got him. Uh, let's just hope he dies. Not really, he's my favorite. But that's Preston Fairmount, uh, the, the millionaire. Rita Young, the athlete. Wendy Adams, the urchin. And William Yorick, the grave digger. So I think these are people that, you know, of course, are in Arkham and, and still the same world. But these are the eight people that you can choose to play as if you don't want to use a conversion kit from the other one. And yes, they all also have their story so far. And the attributes are strength, agility, observation, lore, influence, and will. Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't exactly remember um, what the attributes were for the first one, but I'm pretty sure that those, some of those are different. Next, we are going to go into... Gosh, shit, I don't want to rip these bags because I'm so happy that they at least sent me some. Go ahead and put the investigators back. All right. Now this is where it gets exciting. I'm not obviously not gonna look through all of them because I don't want things ruined for me. Okay, so at first you are gonna have. Right, let's just go. Let's just look at Adam from the. Well, I don't know. How, I don't. Fuck. All right. So you are getting. All right, that's kind of cool. So you have your items they, that are going to be found throughout the um, the mansion, and it specifically tells you there seems to be there are still the key differences. So you have a heavy weapon, a firearm is what it says now, a blade and bladed weapon, and they have a little icon at the bottom for. Uh, to let you know if it's a, a weapon, and then there isn't that icon if it's not. And some of these, okay, well actually one of them, this is new. You have a whiskey, and then, eh, this is actually kind of cool. So you have a whiskey, that you, you use it as an action, then you flip this card, and you turn it into a broken bottle, which is now a weapon, so you treat it as a bladed weapon. That's cool. I actually, I think that's, I think that's really cool. I like that. I, I like that a lot. Next, you have 
slightly bigger deck. Uh, these are the, um, what could be, well, there's Duke, and I know if you're playing with Ash Campete, you start with Duke. So these could be ally items or, or uh, specific um, clue items that you're going to have to be looking for throughout the, um, throughout the game. Now, I'll just show you a few of them. So you have your Brass Key, and then you have your Forensic Evidence. And with these, um, for some of them, so the cir uh, Circumstantial Evidence, that one does have different art, but as for the other ones, they, ha they, they reused art from the first one, which, I mean, can be a letdown for some people, but if you... you surely can understand why they didn't just completely do that. And now, oh, well, there's actually, okay, so there were a few more. So you have your rope that, um, same thing as the whiskey, you have your front option and then your back option. I'm not going to read that for, my, for sake of myself because I don't want everything ruined for me. And then you have, well, I actually, look at and tell you exactly what they are. Condition cards! Yay! <laughs> conditions! So, the conditions you get, things that are going to be fucking you up throughout the game, you have focused, dazed, restrained, stunned, and wounded. Man, I actually, I wish there were... God, I really hope the app does a lot of the work because, so here's, here's just a few, so there's focus, and the art does look really good with it, there's dazed, um, but not a lot of conditions. And I, once again, I could be biased because or uh, because of Arkham and Eldritch, they just, I, there's a shit ton. Of course, there's gonna be a shit ton of expansions for that. Or maybe not. Maybe this is all you get, and then the app, is, the app does all the work. I don't know, I'll probably be playing this tonight. Um, and then you have, okay, so these are conditions that are Okay, no, no, I'm, well, no, um, okay. And then you have insane cards? That's, that's new, that's new. Basically, if you ran out of sanity, you, you became insane, and the Keeper was able to play way more, the art's really cool, was able to play the, the worst cards in the, in the game imaginable, but this one, maybe if you lose all your insanity, you, you now play differently based on the cards. That's cool. That's a cool idea. Not going to look at any of those because I don't want to know. And it looks like the rest of these are spells. So not a lot of spells that you start out with. Uh, same ones that you kind of see. So Feed the Mind, uh, Flesh Ward. So that, yes, yeah, so the Flesh Ward actually has different art, if I'm not mistaken, on that. Um, instill Bravery, Wither. Shriveling, seen that one before, and Rack. So, items, spells, and conditions are what uh, what we just went through. Not a whole lot of variety at the moment, but they could all have a different, um, yeah. So they all have a different back. They kind of do do that Eldritch Horror thing where you have a lot, like a lot of the same conditions, but they they do something different at the end of them. So I guess that's not the worst thing. Okay. And, of course, to the best thing in the whole box, the dice. Ooh, a really nice color of red, uh, D8s, with a magnifying glass, a clue symbol, and an elder sign, and then the rest are blanks. I don't know what they're for, but you have, you have dice as well. I mean, obviously, I'm showing everything in the box. And it looks like the very last thing... Eh. Are okay. Now I did look. I did read a little bit more into this, but from what these are okay. So common item cards. So I guess those were unique items. Yeah. So those were unique items that we just went through. Now we have the common items, the stuff that you can find in an abandoned house, such as candles or a um, or dynamite. I mean, I keep dynamite lying around in my house, but there is the same items that you you saw in the first one that you see all throughout Arkham Horror. So I'll just show you guys a few of them. Um, so, okay, so that, that makes it a little bit better. I thought those were all the items in the game. I was like, that's gonna be stupid. But, 
common items. Now here's here's the thing that is completely different because there is no longer the bitch. No longer a keeper dealing the damage cards or dealing uh, sanity cards. Basically, if you, I'm assuming, once again, I don't 100% know, but there are the damage cards and the horror cards. And if you take damage or horror, you will draw from this deck. And my, they go from minor injuries, old injuries, just random things that could happen to you, which I actually, I think is going to be fun. I think it'll be funny as well, depending on your outlook. Of, of things that they, if you take damage, basically, I'll just go ahead and shuffle these a little bit, you're gonna maybe draw one or more cards. It'll probably tell you, oh, take a damage and, and you draw a card. Um, and, oh, look, a muscle tear. That's cool. So you roll one fewer die whenever you're draw, uh, resolving a strength test. And then, of course, there's the same thing as the sanity. Um, if you take a sanity loss, maybe you... Of course, the keeper had an opportunity to play something on you. Now you uh, draw from the card, and it's just minor shock. No additional effect, so that's nice. You're just like, oh, oh, God, okay. Uh, she just got her head cut off. That's fine. I've seen much worse. So that actually is everything in the game, uh, in the box. Uh, like I said, giant box. No need. Well, there could be more. There is not. Just, you always want to check with them because they do hide stuff in the sides. Uh, so we're missing quite a few, uh, quite a few things from the from the original. I don't understand. I'm not quite sure how combat is going to work in this one. In the other one, you had three separate decks of combat cards that, uh, based on what type the creature was and the condition. Like if you were fighting with a, if it was you attacking it. It was based on what weapon you had. If it, the monster was attacking, it was based on the condition of what was attacking. If it was just a regular attack, or if it was fighting the barred door, or something like that, that could be something they completely took out and put it put in the app. Um, but so far, I, I'm actually a little bit disappointed with the lack of of stuff you get for, and only because of how expensive this this game is. Um, Ninety dollars for something that you don't get a whole lot of now. They do have the conversion kit. Gonna look way more into that because then it kind of makes up for it, but not really because I already spent the money on the, on the first edition. But then again, I'm also gonna be doing a run through for this very soon that um, I'll definitely have a, a much more fleshed out opinion. But that was the Fat Nasty unboxing for Mansions of Madness second edition. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy the run through. Um, may Cthulhu win the election for 2016, and like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.